So this week we have something very fun planned. We're gonna try to challenge ourselves and the bus by making it all the way through the state of Tennessee while trying to have as much fun as possible. We got a very good reminder why we want to use wheel chocks. Do you think you could catch a fish, Jimmy? Natalie, you want to go frolic in that field? While we were traveling down the east side of Tennessee, we were able to make a quick detour to visit some new friends, Chris and Stephanie, and their little dog, Tybee. We got an invitation from these guys to come stop by and check out their bus. This is Chris and Stephanie. Chris has got a campfire going right now, and we're gonna hang out underneath their awning, which we don't have one, so we're a little jealous. Uh, we'll have to install one for you next, <laughs> next trip down. We'll give them our to-do list and they can start taking care of some, some things. <laughs> Like when he goes to bite you and he touches you, he's like he doesn't know what to do and he just kind of backs off. Yeah, he's real. He, he tries to be real easy with yeah. with you when he bites. That's so. so Chris and Stephanie are nice enough to let us hang out with them for a little bit this morning and we get to watch a little bit of their build process. We're glad we don't have to do any of the building right now. It definitely takes us back to when our bus was empty because it looks really similar to ours. Chris and Stephanie's bus is really nice. It's the same model number as our bus, the Model 3800, so they look pretty similar, but with a few key differences, the biggest one probably being the length, obviously. Chris and Stephanie have their own YouTube channel, The CNS Schoolie Project, and they are in the middle of a very cool conversion of a long bus. We were able to get an in-person tour, which we will probably share with you guys at some point in the future. It was really just a lot of fun to be there and to meet some technically new friends who kind of feel like old friends. So that was really a great way to kick off our ride across Tennessee, getting to experience some Southern hospitality firsthand. That brings us to where we are right now, which is Chattanooga. And now it's time for us to start heading West. So we've been at this Walmart overnight and as soon as we pulled up yesterday we got a very good reminder why we want to use wheel chocks. There was an RV that had crashed into that light pole and it looked like they had rolled forward from another spot. The entire windshield shattered, the whole front of the RV was totaled, it looked awful. I felt so bad for them. That's a very good reminder to us of why we want to use wheel chocks. <laughs> Gotta make room for my girl. Yeah. So our bus has been running great since it got out of the shop. We've taken it on some big mountains, but Jimmy has gotten really good at changing gears. Even though we have an automatic transmission, it still helps to kind of downshift if we need to moderate kind of how the bus is running. Yeah, it's something we really had to learn on the Blue Ridge Parkway and it's helped out in Tennessee a little bit, but. Yeah, because of that, we wanted one of us to really learn how to drive this thing right, rather than having both of us kind of halfway know what we're doing. So Jimmy has really learned how to drive this bus and he's been teaching me. So I drove for a little bit yesterday and that's been a fun learning experience, honestly, for both of us. It's been running great since we got all the fixes done to it. And we've definitely learned to warm it up before we drive anywhere because it's starting to get colder and colder and it definitely drives a little bit off and it's a little bit slower getting started. So we usually idle it for a good bit just to warm up the engine and that seems to help, especially because most of the places we stay are right next to the interstate. So that requires us to turn it on and immediately get up to speed and get on the interstate, which can be really hard if it's cold. I hope this bus can get us through Tennessee. I have faith in it. We're not going back. We're not, so we're going down with the ship if, if we have to. You ready to crank it up? I'm ready. I know it's not gonna work on the first time. It always works on the second time though. It's close. Normal. That was normal. <laughs> All right. We'll give it another second. Yeah, another second to warm up. It's gonna be really embarrassing if it doesn't work this time. I know. There you go. The second time is fine. So. So our goal for today is not gonna be to go very far. We're just trying to get to Monteagle. 
I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. And we're gonna stay at a Pilot Flying J overnight. And then tomorrow, we're gonna try to go on a hike. It looks like there's a really nice Tennessee State Park with some waterfalls. So we're big suckers for waterfalls. So since we're crossing time zones, the GPS thinks we're gonna get there in five minutes. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I'm driving through town in an RV and I wanted to know if you guys allow overnight RV parking here. We do. Is there a good spot where we could go to not upset any of the truckers? Okay, that'll work perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Mm, bye. Bye. Score. So we just got to this pilot at Flying J, right? And first thing I do is get gas, we park, I flip the disconnect switch on our battery. I even go inside and ask if they have a dump station for us or not. Natalie made herself a sandwich and is enjoying that. We all have our routines when uh, we get to camp and that's hers. I help. <laughs> she helped, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I work sometimes. <laughs> she does. So speaking of, since we are here so early, we kind of need to get some chores done. We have a basket of clean clothes that have been sitting here since yesterday that we really need to put away. And we've been having this issue with one of the back window shades. We've just kind of velcroed it in place when we got on the road and it's been falling ever since. I think the extreme heat has kind of gotten to it and it's kind of degraded the stickiness on the Velcro pads. So I'm gonna take out our little sewing kit and try to permanently sew it to the window shade so that it doesn't just fall off anymore. You can't see it because it's black on black, but I did one and I discovered very quickly how difficult it is to sew through Velcro. It is so tough and the stickiness on it just makes the thread and the needle just impossible to like grip onto. But I've only got three more to go, so I'll get through it. So I got all four Velcro pads sewed on. Some are better than others, but honestly anything I think would help at this point. So let's go test it out. That honestly already feels so much better. I'm gonna go around and open up the door because that's when we have the most problems is we'll open it up and then the bed's not pressing up against it anymore and it just falls down. So I'm gonna go test that. All right, that definitely works. Yay, I thank guess. you. <laughs> awesome. She's excited for me. Jimmy's. My little seamster. A seam seamster. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. That's so nice. She finished her sandwich, so she has been working. We decided to make one of our favorite meals for dinner tonight. We call it chicken taco soup, but over time it's evolved from a soup to more of a burrito bowl kind of thing. We pre made some chicken a few nights ago in the Instant Pot, and we're going to use that to make dinner. I got the rice. <laughs> Maybe I should have used our bigger pot for this. We have kind of done all of our little morning chores, clean the dishes, put away our clothes, stuff like that. And we're gonna go try to find a hike near here. It says that there's steep mountain grades for the next four miles, so Jimmy's driving this time. We just drove through McMinnville, which is actually where Jimmy and I bought the bus. 
almost exactly a year ago. Where are we going, Jimmy? We're gonna go see a guy about a bus. <laughs> <laughs> we have waited forever to say that. The bus is originally from Arizona, but the previous owner had it in McMinnville, Tennessee. So we drove up here from Atlanta to buy it. Can you guess what my favorite color is? It's green. 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 My fiance's eyes. Green. Apparently that's the only reason he likes me. Yep. <laughs> Ooh. So many activities here. Jimmy. We gotta go bungee jumping. Um. Actually, maybe. Might I mean, be maybe. down for I'm that. I'm sure we will in our lifetime. I know we will. We have to, yeah. If we haven't explained where we're at yet, we're at the Old Stone Archaeological Historical State Park. That's a lot of adjectives. Something Are you like sure? that. I don't know. We'll put it up. I don't remember what the name is. <laughs> it looks like they had a really cool Native American structure here. So we're going to go to try to find that somewhere on the trail. I think they also have a museum. Hey. hey. So this is our first time coming through. Very nice, thank you. You're welcome. Is the, uh, is the museum? Yeah, you guys can take okay, a look. Cool. Right. Thank nice. you. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow. I gotta protect my fort. That is not what this was used for. Yeah. I know, this is We recently learned. So this isn't the structure they're talking about, or is it? No, I don't think this is. Because that'd be, that'd be pretty wild if they decided to build a museum out of the original Native American structure. Yeah, that'd be pretty uh, blatant. Yeah, disrespectful. <laughs> yes, blatant disrespect. Ooh. I like how we drove all the way through the Tennessee mountains just to go look at smaller mountains in a state park. <laughs> <laughs> These mountains have historical significance. They do, they're tiny mountains. So this entire area is like a big 50 acre field almost, and it's surrounded by rock mounds that were made by woodland Native Americans. I think these structures are like 2000 years old. They believe that this site was originally used by woodland Indians for rituals, like I think marriages, funerals, spiritual ceremonies. It's called Old Stone Fort, but it's not really a fort at all. Should I explain why it's not a fort? Please. Well, the museum told us that the European settlers didn't believe that this structure was created by Native Americans. They assumed it was made by previous European settlers to protect against the Native Americans. It definitely shows how the early Europeans were, you know, thinking everything was theirs. Natalie, you want to go frolic in that field? <laughs> I don't know. That's pretty tall grass. I'm ready. Jimmy, you're going to get a tick. They can bite me. I don't want them to. Oh, cool. It's like a real trail. Oh my gosh, be careful, dude. Oh, it looks like a cliff. Whoa, it is. There's water. Because there's a ton of trees down there, so I feel like if you slip, you'll just hit the first tree a foot down and you'll be fine. Fine is kind of a weird way to put it. <laughs> you want to test it? So just to our left are the mounds that the Native Americans built with rocks. It kind of outlines the entire field and there are two rivers on either side of it. So it's kind of a cool little sectioned off area. I don't really know why they needed the walls. I guess nobody really knows for sure because it was so long ago and the history was kind of ignored for a while. But I assume it's kind of to give it an entrance because the place where we walked in had mounds on either side directing you into the big open clearing. So it is a really cool space. It definitely gives it more of a closed in feeling. Whenever these used to be just mounds of rocks, I think that would have been pretty impressive. There's a bench. Can you guess what Natalie is racing towards right now? <laughs> We're in a new time zone, I'm hungry. <laughs> That's true, we just switched over. And it's currently, what? I think it's 12 in real life, but to us it feels like it's one. It's one, yeah. So we're hungry. Mm -hmm. This one's especially hungry. 
We're setting up for lunch and somebody just asked me and Jimmy if we work here. <laughs> Do we look that professional? <laughs> no, we don't. That's the answer. <laughs> I don't know where they got that idea, but it's funny. Yeah, he was really sweet though. He was telling us um, that he didn't want to get too close to the cliffs. <laughs> The well, launch was really good, but we've heard rumors that there's a waterfall here. So I think we're gonna go try to track that down. There's a bench right up there and it's in the shade. We just had to eat our entire lunch in the sun on that bench. And I was sad because all my little peanut butter chips and my trail mix were melting. Yeah, this is just right around the corner from where we decided to sit. Cause that was the first bench we've seen on the trail. We didn't know there was gonna be another one so close. That's what happens when you're too eager for lunch. You make rash decisions and it comes back and it bites you in the butt. Yep. I didn't mind though. I thought the sun was nice, but. Man, do you see me? Like, I, I don't, yeah. I don't tan, I get burnt, so. <laughs> What'd you find, Jimmy? It's too boring to read it. Aw. <laughs> I read the first sentence, I go, ah. <laughs> Some of them are interesting. Yeah. Some of them are not. It's hard to stay focused on that one. There's a cool little ridge right here and I want to go see what's beyond the ridge. No. <laughs> I would love to go swimming in this water. It looks so pretty. And Jimmy says it's really clear when he got up close to it, so. I said it was, I said it was really cold. Oh, cold, it's yeah. It's very cold. Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> but this is literally called Big Falls, and I think it lives up to the name. I love the simplicity of that name. Do you think you could catch a fish, Jimmy? No. Not even gonna try? If one swims up into my hand, I'll, I'll grab it, but <laughs> I don't think I have the skill for that. We're just having a great time hanging out by the waterfall and we kind of walked down the creek quite a ways. But then we remembered we still have like a couple hours of driving that we were planning to get done today. So we might have to pick up the pace a little even though this hike is prettier than I thought it was going to be. All right, we got to find a way up. So we're back from our hike. We're still in the parking lot of the trailhead. We've kind of taken a minute to relax. I made some coffee and Jimmy is going to do me a huge favor and cut my hair. It's getting really long and it gets tangled and it's just, it's too long. It needs to be cut. It's been like a year, I think. Jimmy is the last one who cut it and he, I think he did a good job. I think he's more nervous than I am about it, to be honest. I just don't want to mess up and <laughs> ruin what's going on right here. I'm not worried, I think it'll be fun. I feel like my hair's long enough to where there's tons of wiggle room to like make mistakes and just cut it down again, so. Yeah, and that's probably what we'll do. You've done it before and you've yeah, good at it. Yeah, I've done it several times before. Yeah, twice. I'm not worried I'm gonna mess it up. I'm worried Natalie's gonna be mad at me. <laughs> so we're gonna cut it straight like this and then when you pull it um, in front of your shoulders, it'll be like a little crooked and we'll fix it on the front, right? Right. That's the plan? Yeah, it sounds right. There we go. All right. So here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, let me come to the front. And... So now you're turning your head. Is that what you want? No. Nope. Or... Okay. <laughs> you're like, I'll go ahead and cut it straight like that. <laughs> I think last time we might have just left it. But... I mean, honestly, it's just so no, terrible. It's really, no, it's really cool. We just heard two people outside talking about, oh, look at that. That's a bus. And then somebody said, honestly, it doesn't look terrible. <laughs> High praise. <laughs> I'm sure they don't know that we're in here. <laughs> You're gonna scare him. Yeah, he's coming up to the door. Hey. 
They caught us at a weird time, we're cutting hair. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I was just really? curious what this looks like. Oh yeah, you're welcome to stick your head in if you wanted to. Thank you so much. Yeah. I like that. Do you like that? I really like it. That's nice. We can always cut off another 12 inches later. 12? <laughs> a bee just flew in here. Jimmy, open the door. Buzz Thank off. You. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's nice. All right, I'm ready for the scalp massage. If there is anything that Jimmy can't do, we have not found it yet. This week we've got him sewing stuff by hand, cutting my hair. It's just a Jimmy of all trades. Wow, that looks so much better. It definitely is like, it feels healthier, I think. We've cut hair, eaten lunch, and taken pretty much what was essentially a nap. And we're gonna move on to tonight's destination. Oh.